This is a measure of Sudan's pain, a simple test which reveals acute malnutrition. Sudan was not in good shape before the war. Now the chronically hungry must find the energy to flee it. Arriving in struggling South Sudan, the diagnosis is clear. These new arrivals are extremely vulnerable. At Sudan's other end is Egypt, a journey now considered extremely dangerous. Still, thousands are using every resource to make it. They're tired, sleeping on the streets, in the mosques and in the schools, says this man. But reaching a border is no guarantee of crossing it. Most will be turned back. Khartoum is still the scene of the fiercest fighting, but the army is also bombing the rival militia in its stronghold, the West. The fear is that the instability will spread to Chad, the Central African Republic, and South Sudan. Adding to the mayhem, Russia is delivering weapons to the militia. Meanwhile, here in Nairobi, we're hearing terrifying tales of escape from those who left Sudan and are now here on their way to Canada. They don't want to speak on camera because they're concerned it would impact their immigration case, but they talk about gunmen at checkpoints all the way to the airport and sleeping for days on the ground, not knowing if they'd make it out on a military airlift. Just yesterday, the UN Secretary General visiting Africa told us he was hopeful but not confident a ceasefire could be struck. Today, though, the UN aid chief said neither Sudanese general fighting each other for control want to stop that fighting. So the ceasefire set to start this morning never did. Some foreign citizens had still been able to escape by military airlift, but the British ended their mission today. Many, though, have nowhere to go, no idea of whether they'll ever return home. David Common, CBC News, Nairobi.